All right, guys, today we are going to be doing an interesting video and hopefully a pretty cool video. We're gonna be talking about the best survival knife at each price point, roughly speaking. This is definitely difficult, and I will say when it comes to survival knives, I've tried to pick what I feel like would be the best option for each price point. And also when it comes to the lower or more budget end of this, the knives will be smaller because I'm trying to prioritize knives that are um, robust and can take you know a degree of abuse and as opposed to just the largest possible knife. In addition to that too, finding larger, more survival size knives at more affordable costs is difficult. So, I focus this to be more, you know, like knives that are tough and that would offer a decent amount of usability in survival situations. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So starting off, like I said, on the low end, we are talking about sub $20 knives. And for that, I have to say the Mora Robust is probably the best option. Now, once again, it is a smaller blade length, but you're getting about that eighth of an inch or yeah, one eighth of an inch thick blade length or blade thickness and a very decent Scandinavian grind. Now I chose this over the Companion Heavy Duty because this is a little bit cheaper, but the Companion Heavy Duty would offer you just a little bit more blade length um, but certainly not anything necessarily more usable so this one's pretty good it's like I said one of the better options for a sub $20 knife you're pretty limited as a whole you can't really do a whole lot for the price point of this knife all right, so next one up is going to be the Condor Pterosaur. Now, this one's interesting, and as we step up into the around $40 to $50 price range, there are a significant amount of options, and I will say a, the SK5 version of the Cold Steel SRK would also be a solid option here. The only reason I didn't throw that in here um, is because the SRK is coming up on the list again, um, so I didn't want to have the SRK in two spots at once because that kind of seems a little bit unfair or cheeky so i'm throwing the condor pterosaur here other solid options would be the condor or sorry the cold steel recon um, which is about a seven inch sk5 high carbon blade so that would be a little bit more fitting for the overall uh, length but it's also not full tang so take that for what it's worth this is full tang and uh, it's pretty decent like i said it's definitely a little bit larger than the robust but still smaller it's also an eighth of an inch thick piece of 1095 high carbon so take that for what it's worth there are other options out there the srk from cold steel and the recon scout i want to say it is from cold steel are going to be valid options as well all right, as we step up into the $60 to $80 range, we're going to be looking at the um, Veristalica Scrama. Now, this is not always the easiest knife to get. You have to buy this directly from Veristalica um, online, and this comes from Finland. But I feel like, once again, when we're talking about survival knives with a decent you know, blade thickness, with a decent edge length, the Scrama is probably one of the better choices out there. And this one comes in at just over seven inches. It's a little bit more Parang machete styled or inspired. But once again, it is full tang and it is made out of 80 CRV2. Now, what keeps this knife affordable and you can step it up more and it can become more expensive, like over $100 is if you go with different sheath options. But if you get just a blade cover, it's decent, especially for the size of this knife. You can throw it in a backpack um, or do something along those lines and it's going to work pretty darn well for you. So the Strama is the next on this list. All right. Next one up is like a kind of earlier foreshadowed, the Cold Steel SRK. Now this is where we're stepping up into the right around $100, like 80 to 100 or just a little over $100 price range. And this is the Cold Steel SRK in CPM 3V. And once again, I've talked about this knife a lot. I still think that this is one of the best knives you can get because for the price point, this knife offers you an incredible value on a really great steel. Like this steel here, is for a $100 knife unbeatable like you're usually you see cpm 3b as you'll see here in higher end knives knives that cost sometimes double or more than double than this knife so the fact that they're offering <clears throat> cpm 3b for right around $100 makes that knife incredibly hard to beat 
All right, now stepping it up into the mid $100 range, we have the Falkneven lineup. Now this one's the S1, and you guys can find these typically for about $140 to $160. I think for the price point, I'm not the largest fan of these knives. Like I said, I do think things like the SRK beat this knife, especially, especially when you consider the Falkneven kind of sort of stole the homework of the SRK and made it their own. Now, like I said, they did make it their own. It has a little bit thicker blade stock. It's made out of a triple layer laminate VG10. So, you know, a little bit more corrosion resistant, but a bit less tough and a bit less shock resistant. However, the S1 and the A1, um, particularly the S1 here, more for the price constraints. Um, like I said, it tends to hover around $140 to $160. And so for that price range, you're going to be dealing with a decent knife that is going to work well. Now, stepping it up into about the $160 to $180 price range, we have AK knives with the AK 6.5. Now, the 5.5 is also a valiant option. And I also want to throw this out there that I did another video talking about like the best USA made knives, and I did not include um, SC on this list. Now, the reason why, and I'm going to mention it particularly with this AK 6.5, is that in this price range of 160 to 180, even creeping up into $200, this is about where most of your SC 6s, your SC 5s hang out. And so the reason why I'm not throwing SC on this list is not because I think their products are bad. I do like SCs, but for about the same price, you can get an Architect Knives 6.5 or 5.5 in CPM 3V or Magna Cut, and you're getting better performance, better edge retention, better corrosion resistance. You're getting a superior knife overall in pretty much every way possible um, for that similar price. So that's why I'm not saying that SC knives are bad if you have one don't go sell it but i just think that ak knives or architect knives is offering a better deal so yeah that, that's my opinion once again you know teach their own but i do think that ak knives is really solid and so that's why in this you know 160 to 180 dollar range um the ak 6.5 has to be on the list or the architect knives have to be on this list they've really earned it and i think that they are really worth it all right, stepping it up into a little bit more expensive. We're not gonna go quite by like $20 brackets here, but the next one um, for kind of, you know, upwards of $200 is, in my opinion, and once again, this is where things like, once you have this much money, you can start really buying whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It becomes less about like, you know, so much of these knives need to hit this, 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 and Criterion. It's more just what do you want? But for me, I really do like the Bark River Knives Strike Force 2. It's a big blade. It's a wide blade. It has a slight, very gentle recurve to it, and it is overall a really nice knife. Now, this one in particular has burl wood handles with mosaic pins. This is definitely not a $200 knife, but there are um, micarta options of this knife, micarta flavors of the Strike Force 2 that do hover around the $200 to $240 price range. So you can get these more affordable um, than this one. This one is just a little bit more dressed up, a little bit more expensive, but I do like this knife. I think it does offer a great amount of usability for survival applications. It obviously is a little bit more leaning into tactical stuff, but it is a very solid and well-built knife. Okay, last one up and jumping into the, you know, 350 plus dollar range is the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And this has been a go-to a staple on the channel. You guys are probably not surprised to see this guy around. Other great variants or great options at this price range would be TRC's Apocalypse if and when you can find it. A lot of people wonder, um, you know, why I don't have a TRC Apocalypse, why I don't talk about them a lot. It's strictly because I have tried to get one for years. I just can't get one, okay? So um, I don't, partly, I don't have one to show you guys. It is a very solid knife made out of, you know, basically the same size and about, about the same, you know, um, as this seven inch Pacific, but it's made out of LMAX. So it's a great knife. Um, I don't have any issues with it. I've obviously never held one, never handled one, never used one. So I can't fully say definitively um, because they're just so darn elusive. If you have a TRC Apocalypse, good on you, but I can't really like sit here and, you know, sing its praises because I just don't have one to show. And also too, I don't love showcasing and recommending knives that are impossible to get. I say that and I know the Pacific is not the easiest knife to get, but even just last week I saw um, Monkey Edge 
uh, the website, the knife website, released a batch of seven inch magna cut versions of, of the Chris Reeve knives specific. So they are out there, they are being released. There are variants of these knives that you can get. You can even go on the resale forums and find Pacific's fairly easy, easier now than in previous years. So the Pacific is available. I think it's um, a really solid knife and it's definitely more combat or tactical leaning, but there are a few modifications you can do. And people have on my channel, they have messaged me privately and said that they have bought their own Pacifics. They have modified them. I, I know of at least two people that have bought Pacifics, modified them in the same ways that I modified my Pacific and absolutely love them. So. Once again, um, you know, it's not for everyone, but the Pacific is a very well-proven knife. And uh, like I said, I can confirm that there's at least a handful of people that have bought them, modified them in the ways that I have and absolutely love them for wilderness use. So I'm not alone in thinking that the Pacific is a great survival knife. And even if I was, I've used the heck out of my Pacific and love it. So um, yeah, there's definitely a ton of great survival knives that weren't covered in this video. Things like the Tarava Yakari Puko from Veristalaika is another very solid option that uh, I do recommend. Other ones that are great options are things like the Mora Garberg. I just, once again, in this video, and especially with this list, I'm trying to pick the absolute most competitive knives. Like I said, that's why I kind of alluded with AK knives um, being better than SE is it's just that they are slightly more competitive. They're offering you a slightly better deal than SE can because SE is still using differentially heat treated 1095, which is by no means bad. But when you have a company, you know, making these out of Magna Cut in CPM 3V for roughly the same price as SE's knives, it gets harder, you know, it gets harder to recommend those knives because with this channel, especially my opinions and my views are not bought for um, my, or are not bought. They're not, you know, like I'm not altered. I'm trying to give you guys the end users, the best possible deals of what I know. Of course, I don't know every single knife out there in existence. There are there could be better knives, but these are knives made by reputable companies, reputable manufacturers. And I'm just trying to help you guys get the best possible deals on knives that are very usable and very functional. So that's why there are, like I said, plenty of other knives that I could mention. There are plenty of great knives out there. You know, Bussy makes some excellent knives, but they just tend to be very expensive. Um, I mean, if you are really looking to go spend $600 on a knife, you know, the Bussy Team Gemini um, is a great knife as well. It's just very expensive. So, you know, there are plenty of other options out there, but this is my list and I think what I said in my opinion, the most competitive offerings for their price points. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.